kids these days, they grow so fast. Hello there, I'm Kristen, also known as Volenvine, here on my YouTube channel where I chat about what I've been knitting, what I've been sewing, what I've been making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all of those things with me. And yes, I'm back. I know I did not record another, or publish, I should say, I did not publish a, a second video this week because I have been working very, very diligently on putting out my sock knitting tutorial. And while the video is ready, it is ready to be published, I want to release it in tandem with the newly revisited, revised, remastered <laughs> sock knitting pattern. I know, it sounds ridiculous, but um, this is a pattern that I released back in 2015 when I was just dipping my toes into pattern writing and pattern design and it's my basic recipe for knitting a plain simple pair of socks and I wanted to revisit it fix all the errors and typos and again release it in tandem with the video tutorial but yes that is coming very soon as soon as it's ready to go it's gonna go up on my youtube channel hopefully by this weekend so stay tuned for that but yes that is what I've been busy doing this past week and the reason why I didn't put out a second video so I hope you understand but uh, I will be back next week with September fa September favorites? Yeah, oh my goodness. It is September. It's going to be September. I can't believe it. Next week is my monthly favorites episode, so I hope you guys are excited for that. Um, and yes, but anyway, welcome to my sewing episode, as the title of this video suggests. This episode is all about what I've been sewing. I have to admit, my sewing mojo has not been very strong these days, my friends. Uh, lately, I really just feel like sitting and knitting. Again, my interests just typically wax and wane and I just go with the flow. Whatever I feel like doing, I just do it and I don't feel guilty about it anymore. I used to, but not anymore. Because the heart, the creative heart wants what it wants. Am I right? Am I right? I think I'm right. But anyway, I do have some sewing to share with you this week. Uh, but before I get into that, just a couple of announcements. As usual, we do have our history make-along that is currently underway. And again, that is our year-long make-along where we are endeavoring to make anything inspired by a historical period, a historical era or point in time prior to the 1950s. And yes, there are two ways to join. The first way is to hop on over to the Volenvine Ravelry group where you can uh, partake in the chatter happening in the history, make a long thread, uh, just post your progress, your whips, your FOs, links to inspiring uh, patterns or projects that you're thinking of casting on or weaving or crocheting, again, whatever your craft is, you are so welcome to join. And of course, I will lock that thread at the end of the make-along come March 2021 and draw a winner for a random giveaway prize. Uh, you know the drill. <laughs> so uh, that is the first way. The second way is to hop on over to Instagram and again, post your projects there using hashtag HistoryMAL. Uh, and yeah, it's even if you don't feel like partaking in the, in the make-along, just check it out because there are just so many wonderful and inspiring projects happening and it just, yeah, it never gets old, guys. But that is our annual make-along currently happening. And last but not least, this episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can learn pretty much anything. I use it all the time. Wow, I've got this memorized, don't I? <laughs> anyway, it's a great platform. I use it for everything when I really need to learn something in the moment, such as a technique for editing Adobe Premiere videos. I also use it for learning how to run a small business. Yes, even though I've been running a small business for quite some time already, we're coming up on six years, Whoa. Uh, I still dip in there whenever I need a refresher course on how to run small business or um, you know, marketing or what have you. Uh, I use it for photography. I use it for pretty much everything. So if that sounds like something you'd be into, click on the link in the description box below and you can try Skillshare for two months absolutely free on yours truly. That said, thank you so much Skillshare and let's get on with the show. I do have a finished object to share with you this week and this is a project that I teased on a previous vlog that I published. Uh, I, You just saw me sewing on it and I didn't show you what I was making exactly, but uh, here it is in its finished glory. And yes, this is, there was some fuzz, fuzz balls on, on my bag, but here it is in all its glory. This is the Seabrook backpack by Seamwork Patterns. And you're probably wondering, Kristen, why did you make yourself a backpack that seems so off brand for you you're you are not incorrect um <laughs> i cannot the last time i wore a backpack i think 
I was in high school or no college probably. I have no idea. No, after high school, I switched to messenger bags. Anyway, I digress. I made a backpack for myself uh, with the idea or intention of wearing this while biking with Dennis in Cape Cod. Because whenever we go to Cape Cod, I bring my bike and always kick myself for not having some sort of backpack that I can just wear on my shoulders when we take a bike ride. Um, normally, I just carry a tote bag with me. And if you can imagine biking on a rail trail with a tote bag, that can get kind of cumbersome. So I've always thought about investing in a backpack, but knowing me, I'm like, why buy it when I can just make it? So I did hop on thefoldline.com and search their database for all um, all of the backpack patterns that are out there. And this is the one that kind of fit the bill for what I was looking for. And I did use fabric from Stash. I wanted something, you know, black or gray, something that would go with my wardrobe. If this looks familiar, yeah, uh, this is fabric or denim fabric that I purchased when trying, attempting to make a pair of jeans. Again, if you follow this channel, you know that I don't wear jeans or, or denim or pants for that matter. I don't wear pants. I'm not a pants girl. I, I've tried it. I cannot be that person, but I did like the idea of making my own jeans or denim pants, trousers, but in the process, I was just like, I, I'm never gonna wear these. So that kind of went out the window. So I repurposed the leftover denim fabric that I had in my stash and put it towards this project right here. So the top portion is denim and then the bottom portion is canvas. Uh, and the pattern actually calls for heavyweight fabric. And um, I, if you can see, this is sort of lightweight. It didn't really meet the criteria of the suggested fabrics for the pattern, but to remedy that, I actually interfaced the fabric with some high loft interfacing to give it kind of a little bit more sturdiness and padding, especially if I'm gonna chuck a camera lens in here. I don't want it specifically knocking around. Not that I would just dump the camera lens in it on its own. I would actually have a separate bag for that, but just a little added insurance uh, if this were to take a tumble, so to speak. Um, and yeah, if you can see the inside, I believe this fabric is basic uh, black quilting cotton by cotton and steel these really adorable metallic gold moons and stars all over it it's just like really cute and you can see there are grommets that i had to painstakingly insert <sighs> yeah and then on the back there's this little clever tab where if you push it all the way up it drawstrings it together and then you have two straps for your arms and you can wear it like this Ta-da! However, I do have a few qualms about this finished object. The first being are the straps. Um, the straps and the grommets are the exact size that the pattern suggests. And while I did use what the pattern suggests, I feel like the, the straps are just a bit too flimsy. Too, they're too thin in my opinion. And again, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this. The, the straps are black, braided uh, cotton cording and yeah i mean they're sturdy but they just feel a little too thin for me and then also the grommets i feel like they could have been a little bit smaller while i did bring this bag with me to our last trip up to cape cod it did not get anywhere one being because i ended up not going on a bike ride second i just at the end of the day, the straps really get to me and make this kind of not useful. Um, and while I prob well, it looks like I probably could replace the straps because I mean, look look how big the grommets are. They're it, these uh, the straps are basically swimming inside the grommets. They have you install these little tabs on the back. I don't know if you can see right here, uh, which will only accommodate this width of rope. So I don't know. I would probably have to unpick that and. Uh, yeah. While I'm not 100% in love with this finished object, I will say it has been getting a little bit of use because uh, when I when I come down to work in the dye dungeon, I tend to bring a lot of stuff with me. So this has just been something that I chuck, you know, whatever stuff, books, uh, my phone, a camera, you know, in so I can easily just go up and down between my dye dungeon and our house upstairs. So that's what this bag has essentially become. So it has been getting some love, but um, not for the initial intended purpose that I had planned for it. Other than that, I wanna say this project came together fairly quickly. I think, uh, you know, over the course of two days, I want to say it came together in maybe about four hours or less. The bottom, I should mention, is a circle, and I thought that would be a little complicated, but honestly, it, just, it came together without a hitch, so that worked out really nicely. I mean, the grommets, too. I, I would say that was the most labor-intensive because you have to hammer those in and you have to make sure that you have the right size tool. I had a panic order. <laughs> I like saying panic order. I had a panic order, a, um, a the appropriate size... Um, 
insertion tool for the grommet from Amazon. Uh, thankfully that came within a day and I was able to bang my heart out um, inserting these. Uh, yeah, real, real good stress reliever, very cathartic. Highly recommend it if you're feeling a little stressed. And that I believe is all I wanna say about this project. This next project that I'm gonna share with you is a project that has been percolating since last November of 2019. And I haven't shared it on the channel yet because I've just been gathering materials and figuring out what I'm going to do for it. And anyway, I have the materials here <laughs> and I'm ready to talk about it, finally. And you're probably wondering, Kristen, why the cyan? Why the teal? You don't wear, you don't wear this colorway. You are correct. Uh, this is not a project that I'm making for myself. Let me explain. Last Thanksgiving, my sister-in-law approached me and asked if I would be interested in sewing my niece's bat mitzvah dress. I mean, twist my arm, sign me up. I, I am here for this, my friends. No pressure, no pressure whatsoever, right? Right? I, I, I think I know what I'm doing. I hope I know what I'm doing. What did I get myself into? I have no idea, but I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna make it work, as Tim Gunn says. So the way this has been operating is that we've been communicating via email and have been uh, communicating via Pinterest. So we created a Pinterest board where we're swapping ideas when it comes to fabrics, uh, colors, styles. It's been working out really well. We settled on a color, so teal, teal is the color, my friends. Uh, and the style uh, dress that she wants, I will pop a photo of the inspiration here so you can see what I'm going to be recreating or endeavoring to recreate. And this is a dress that she found online. Uh, as you can see, it is just a very simple, sweet fit and flare dress with a tiered skirt, uh, a sweetheart neckline with lace detail and sleeves, cap, really cute cap sleeves, and then this really beautiful um, rhinestone glitzy bl bling detail around the waist. And she made it very clear that she wants the hem to have like this wide, wide hem detail, which to be honest, <laughs> I'm pretty grateful for because the thought of sewing a narrow hem out of chiffon, um, it makes me sweat bullets quite frankly. So I'm, I'm very glad that she settled on a wide hem detail. Uh, so that will, I'm probably jinxing it right now, but that seems pretty simple to execute. So thank you, Juliana, if you are watching this, which I highly doubt you are. All right, let's talk about pattern choice because uh, I, in my head, had it that I was sewing for a small child. I don't see her that often and I still in my mind, she is my little niece. And I immediately started looking for patterns for, you know, small children, you know, preteen, what have you, uh, it, it just made sense to me. And I found a pattern that was a dead ringer for this dress and I got all excited and lo and behold, I had my sister-in-law take her measurements and realize that she is, she is a growing girl. I found myself having to look for a Mrs. pattern kids these days, they grow so fast. A pattern actually did come to mind. And you might recall that I did make this pattern for myself a couple of Halloweens ago. I made myself a High Lady of the Night Court dress inspired by a Court of Thorns and Roses. And that gave me hope because it's a dress that I was, it was a pattern that I'm familiar with and you know, just remaking it for someone with a different size, size proportions, I could, to you know, totally doable. So because I cut that pattern out uh, already, I just went ahead and ordered a new pattern so I would have something fresh to work with and with her measurements. Uh, and this is the pattern in question. So you can kind of see uh, the similarities between the, the dress she has in mind, but the skirt is gathered at the waist, whereas the Dillard's one is isn't gathered. So I decided to do another search to see if I could find something that was just, you know, simple A-line. And I ended up stumbling on another pattern that is even better. While it's still gathered, it has that high-low detail where I can layer the different um, layers of fabric and everything. So I feel like that version, I'll pop it I'll pop a photo of it here, but I feel like this version will be more of a dead ringer for the dress that she has in mind. So anyway, uh, let's talk about fabric, shall we? And this is the lace that I purchased. It's just a very sheer kind of, um, you know, average lace that I purchased from fabric.com of all places. Uh, so that is going to be the overlay for the bodice. And then the underlining or the lining, I should say, is going to be this beautiful taffeta. Is it? Let me see. Yeah, it's more shiny on this side. So this is going to be the, the lining underneath. 
very pretty. It's almost like a peacock blue, I want to say. However, for the chiffon that I purchased, I'm thinking it's just a smidge too bright compared to the other fabrics that I purchased. The others are more of a peacock blue, whereas this is more just outright cyan. Um, and I'm not sure how she's going to feel about the contrast. I did hop on moodfabrics.com and as much I hate to say I'm not a fan of mood fabrics, they did have fabric that would be better suited for this project. So I might cave and order that fabric. And it's also nicer, it's 100% silk, whereas this is just polyester. Only the best, only the best for my niece, you know. I love her. So that's the verdict on this fabric and I'm gonna have to refold it again later. Uh, but for the bling around the waist, I went with this right here. And this is, let me see, it's, I got one yard um, and I believe it's iron on. It's just a very simple, it's a lot more simple and understated than the one in the photo, but I think it'll be a really nice delicate detail uh, to add around the waist. So I'm very, very excited about this project, guys. I don't know if you can tell. Project Bat Mitzvah Dress is in full effect. And the other cool thing is that my mother-in-law is going to be using leftover fabric from this project to weave my niece's tallest for the ceremony. So that is going to be really exciting to see come together as well. And this whole this whole project I'm, I'm loving. Um, even though my sewing mojo for myself is not really where I want it to be or it's just not happening right now, um, I'm very, very excited about this project in particular and I wanna see it happen and come together and ah, yeah, very excited. That is all the sewing content that I have to share with you this week, my friends. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I do have one blathery announcement to make, uh, but otherwise I'm just gonna sign off. Last week I tossed around the idea of starting a separate Instagram feed for my photography and I made it happen, you guys. I now have a separate feed specifically for my photography. If you'd like to follow my photography exploits, you can now do that at imkristinlair.com over on Instagram. And <laughs> that is because at Kristen Lair and at Kristen.Lair have all been taken. Um, and yeah, so I'm left with I am Kristen Lair because I am Kristen Lair. And there you have it. I hope you guys enjoy whatever I happen to post over there, but I'm having, again, lots of fun learning about photography and trying different styles out and, and the like. So that said, I am going to end things there. Thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this episode and haven't already, please feel free to like and subscribe down below. I put out two videos for your viewing pleasure every week, although I have been very bad at the second video. I hope to get back on track very soon, but in general, I put out two videos for your viewing pleasure. I digress. Until the next video, happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making, and have an awesome weekend. Bye.